Hello again folks, this is the third introductory screencast and this screencast will be discussing major muscle groups, how muscles work and the major contractions. Again you will need to make as much notes as you can on this, again it's something we're not really going over in class as much, so the more notes you make the better and if you don't understand something just pause it, go back, rewind and play again. OK, to start with, a little bit frightening when you first come in, but you will need to know all of the major muscle groups involved in the body. What I suggest you do is pause this section of the YouTube clip and jot these muscles down. If you would require a muscle sheet, uh, if you come to the office, we can probably give you one. Um, as I say, you will need to know all of these muscle groups. Pay particular attention to what we call the rotator cuff, which is in the top right corner, and what you probably know is the quadriceps because um, this area will need more detail which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so pause this and jot those muscle groups down. Exactly the same process for the back. Again, pause this, make note of the rotator cuff and what we call the hamstring area which is where the biceps femoris semitendinosus semimembranosus is on this picture. Okay. With regards to the rotator cuff, this is an area in the shoulder and at A-level PE we have to describe the different muscles involved in the rotator cuff and there are four of these. So as you can see, anterior just means the front, posterior just means the back on this image and the four muscles are as follows, supraspinatus, subscapularis on the anterior on the front and then you've got the teres minor and infraspinatus as well as the supraspinatus on the posterior or the back. So again just pause this and make a note of those muscle groups. Those control every movement you can make in your ball and socket joint in your shoulder. Quadriceps, well in your A level exam you will not get a mark for saying quadriceps at any time, you'll need to be more specific than that and so therefore you need to be able to name the muscle groups that are in the front of your quads these muscle groups are these, the rectus femoris, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and of course there's your patella uh, kneecap bone at the bottom, which isn't actually a muscle, but these muscle groups are actually embedded over the patella. On the back, you probably know that as the hamstring area. Again, in your exam, you will not get a mark for same hamstrings, you'll need to be more specific, so therefore you'll need to say biceps femoris, semitendinosus or semimembranosus and be specific as to the region of the hamstring that you're talking about to create muscle movement. So again, pause this, make a note of all of those muscle groups please. The front is your quadriceps, the back is your hamstrings. Muscles don't just work automatically, they work in pairs and key points to note about this, you'll need to know how muscles operate Muscles can only pull, they don't push. So that's important when identifying different sections of muscles in a minute. They always work in pairs or in twos. You have what's called an agonist, which is the prime mover. That is the muscle that's doing the pulling, it is doing the work. The opposite of an agonist is an antagonist. That is a muscle that relaxes, it doesn't do much work basically is there to act as a break. So if we have a look at what we call the bicep, bicep brachii and the tricep brachii, if you look at picture A, as you bend your biceps, it is the bicep brachii that is doing the pulling, the muscle on the top. That muscle is the agonist. And if you look at the opposite muscle, the triceps, that muscle is relaxing, it's not doing any pulling, so therefore it is the antagonist. If you then straighten your arm back to normal uh, length, the muscle that's doing the pulling there is the back muscle which is the triceps, so the triceps is the agonist, and the muscle which is relaxing, not doing the pulling, and is the antagonist, is the biceps brachii. How do you find an antagonistic pair? Well this is a few steps to help you do it. First of all, you need to identify the main bone, and we've covered all the skeleton in a previous screencast, so go back to that if you need to know that. 
Once you've done that, there should be two muscles either side of the bone, and you just need to name them to start off with. Once that happens, you then just watch the movement. What's happening as you move that bone, that muscle group? Remember, the agonist is the one that's doing the pulling or doing the main work. The antagonist is the one not doing much work or very minimal work, acting as a brake. So if you look at this picture now, you can identify the main bone, which is the humerus, because we're talking about the upper arm. If we bend our upper arm, such as the picture on the left, you'll notice that the, the biceps brachii is the main one doing the pulling, so that has to be the agonist, and the triceps brachii isn't doing much at all, so that has to be the antagonist. So they're the two muscles either side of the bone. Again, if you look at picture two, as we straighten out, the triceps brachii is doing the pulling, so it has to be the antagonist, and the biceps brachii is relaxing, not doing much work at all, so that will be the antagonist. And you can use this process to find any antagonist, antagonistic pairs within the body. Moving on to the last piece of the screencast is contractions. There are three types of contractions you will need to be able to identify for your exams. What we call concentric contractions, eccentric contractions and isometric contractions. The top two are classified as isotonic contractions, but you only really need to know that they're concentric or eccentric. So starting with concentric then, this happens as a muscle shortens. Okay, That's the key thing to remember. And generally, if you flex a muscle, remember flexion from our last screencast, that is generally a concentric contraction. It produces joint movement, so when a, muscle, when a joint moves, that is generally a concentric contraction. A good example of this is if you're doing a bicep curl, that's with the weight on the end. If you move your arm, if you move your fist towards your shoulder, such as in the picture, the movement you are making there is a concentric contraction. You are flexing your bicep, that is concentric contraction. Further example here is of a sit-up. As you go up, to do the sit-up or the crunch, your rectus abdominis in the middle area of your, your abs will be contracting. It shortens, you can see it in the picture, it's very short. That is a concentric contraction. The opposite to concentric contraction is an eccentric contraction. This is where you lengthen a muscle or make a muscle longer. And it helps control the movement in your body. Again, going back to our bicep curl, this time, if we do the downward phase of the bicep curl, so if we pull our fist away from our shoulder, your bicep brachii is actually getting longer, okay? Because you're making the muscle longer, and it's your tricep brachii that's getting shorter. So your bicep brachii is becoming eccentric. Again, good example of this. If you walked yourself against the wall and you straightened your leg, not necessarily holding it, but just straightened it. The rectus femoris, which is on the back of your hamstring, and your soleus and your gastrocnemius, again, on the back of your calf, will lengthen. They are lengthening out. That is an eccentric contraction. Lastly, we have isometric contractions. And isometric contractions is where you hold a muscle group still generally providing tension. There is no movement. Okay, It actually stops joint movement doing this. good example going back to our bicep curl is if I just held the weight on the end of my arm, my biceps brachii will actually become isometric. It stays still and eventually it will start to shake because it's just holding the movement. The best example of this practically is if you did a plank or the, the picture shows a side plank I am tensing all of my rectus abdominis there, and therefore the rectus abdominis is becoming isometric. It is holding still. So isometric contraction is holding a muscle group still. Okay, as with any screencast, go back over this stuff again and again and again. Make notes and make sure you understand all of the muscle groups, how muscles work in terms of antagonistic pairs, and also all of the three contractions.
and he helped come and see us in the office.